Sam? Oh. Sam, hello? Oh, it's on. Sort of. Good morning. This doesn't sound like I'm really being uh, amplified much, does it? Is that just me? You agree with me? It's okay? It's a little low, um, but I can... All right. Good morning. Glad to be with you all on this um, chilly beginning to spring break, which we knew we might have some folks gone. When we scheduled this, we were looking at Easter Way back when Catherine was putting together the schedule, we needed to be about a month out, but we also didn't want it to be the week before we shifted gears, so this was kind of one of these spring break Sundays we were going to have to do. So hopefully spread the word that it's going to be online, it's being live streamed, uh, so anybody who missed it can, can join us. Um, I was looking through here and remembered we haven't prayed our campaign prayer in a minute, and it was pretty nice, so I thought I pulled it, I pulled it back out. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, you call us to make your love visible in the world around us. Give us wisdom and courage to meet this moment with generosity and with hope. That we may grow in your loving kindness and show forth your compassion in our community with renewed faithfulness and boldness through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. It holds up, right? I think that's still what we're about. Uh, Catherine is one of the people off on spring break with their family. Catherine composed that prayer with the help of her pastoral uh, care community during that, during the uh, uh, getting ready for the cap campaign. Okay, here's what we're up to today. We're going to have, uh, bring you up to speed, uh, review. David's going to come help us review phase two in our project, um, uh, the scope and the schedule of how things are going to unfurl. We're going to have folks come and talk about how life at Calvary is going to uh, work after we kick ourselves out of two-thirds of our own space again and live into that for a, a bit. And then uh, Margaret Craddock is going to come talk about what this Monument Lab grant's all about. It has to do with our memorial site outside the church and the work that's gone on for years there, but that's, that's now going to take shape in the, in the next year or two in some exciting ways. Um, so, before David comes, I'm just going to remind us how we got here. January 2023, a little bit over a year ago, we had that glorious campaign kickoff out at the Botanic Gardens. If you were there, it was just this fabulous coming together. It's hard to believe that it's only a little more than a year ago. A little bit of life's happened since then. Um, May 2023, we began the organ renovation, and there was the excitement of the organ pipe caper that made us famous all over social media. All, you know, all press is good press, right? Um, July through November... We undertook the renovation of the church. So when costs came out, as we were celebrating our successful campaign, significantly higher, we went back and started redesigning, value engineering through the summer, peeled off the church because that hit right about where it needed to be. And so charged ahead to get the church finished, and it came in on time and under budget. Um, phase two is going to be April 2024 through January 2025. So that's just to kind of stake out how we got to this point and what we're, what we're looking at next. Um, let me say before, I, before David comes, uh, David Lusk has been our steering, uh, steering committee chair for the project, the day-to-day -day kind of stuff. The other folks who've been deeply involved in the day-to-day, there have been a bunch of other groups that have given us input as far as how are we going to do this, hundreds of people actually. Charles Shipp, Margaret Craddock, Richard Hendricks, Margaret McLean has really come on board. She has the spiritual gift of creating spreadsheets that are both thorough and readable, which is an incredible thing. And David Balling is going to come aboard, especially after Easter when we tear into this. We need a, a representative on the ground during the week confirming things are being done right. That's not just Richard and me. So David has agreed to come aboard as, as uh, one of our folks, too. The vestry last a month ago, too, said we... Um, that their goal for this year is to really be a listening presence in the congregation. That's one of their goals. 
So three folks uh, stepped up and said, we'd like to start getting involved, being present at some of the, under, uh, uh, the construction meetings and whatnot. So Franklin Barton just walked in. Um, also, Allison Parker and Christina Ross, they'll probably all have a special, Franklin's been in on some budget things we're, we're going forward with. Christina stepped in on the M Monument Lab group. Um, so, but they're just coming on board primarily to have a vestry presence as things shift around. So spread that word and reach out to those folks if you want to know what's happening. Okay, David's going to come forward and kind of walk us through. Good morning, everybody. Glad we're here. Um, you all know what we're doing, but I'm doing some recaps anyway, and, and shout out your questions when you have them. Just to give my bona fides, way back when, when I was on a McBride, um, Andy Macbeth, wow. <laughs> Thank you, David. When we were on that vestry together, I, get, I did a walkthrough of our building and our spaces and the nooks and crannies of this place and showed how much space we have and how much wasted space we were using. And so what we've done here, I'm going to reiterate, we're not building anything new. There's no new structure for all this, but we're just using our space in a much wiser manner. So there was that role. Then I got up and spoke during the Garada regime about what we might do at that time. And now here we are this many years later, and it's finally happening. So everybody, thank you for, for staying with it for long term. But what we're going to have in a year and a half from now is going to be awesome and a whole new reinvigorating of community and campus. With that said, let's just say where we are. Plaza, right? Reinvited Plaza. We probably aren't doing all of this in phase one, but thank you to Margaret Craddock and Scott for getting us a, a Pacello grant. We are gonna start very soon by tearing up the asphalt in the staff parking lot, um, bringing in new dirt that will grow grass, and we're gonna grow grass there. So that happens sometime later this spring and we're gonna have green space downtown on the Calvary block once again. I think that's gonna be nice. It's gonna show that we're doing something um, outside of the box that we've had for so many years. So expect dirt over there, expect fewer parking places for any of you who park in that lot, but never, feel there, never fear there are plenty of parking places around for us. Entrance, big new space formerly known or continue to be known as the Orgel Room. This is the spine, this is the brains of what we're planning for the whole phase two. You are standing, um, you are looking from the two doors into the Orgel Room. Straight ahead, the stairs up to second floor. Top of second floor that you're looking at is the nursery. So it's right there. If you're coming in through what will no longer be known as the alley door, but the prime, the door on the east side, you walk in that hallway and you'll look straight up to the nursery beyond the stairs. To your right, doors into the mural room. That's the mural room there from a different vantage point. The light stays the same. The overhead, the skylights that are in there now remain. However, that wall that blocks off the mural room is now opened up with those four passageways. They probably stay open all the time. Mural Room has new lights. Mural Room has new floors. Mural Room doesn't have the mural where you expect it. Instead, it'll be across the way. It's going to be a room that, that's used more than just for meals and won't feel like the dank, dark place that it has for so many years. Um, you've seen the plan. This was the easiest way to go up. We're on first floor right now. You enter. So that's the alley door. Okay. Alley door right there, through the corridor to the stairs of the picture we just saw. All of that area, formerly known as Calvary Place, is staff offices. Lots of glass into that at the reception space here, surrounded by the offices. Another exit door out of the office area to the new chapel or the multi-purpose room on first floor. That's about the size of one of the current first floor Sunday school rooms or second floor Sunday school rooms. They match floor to floor. 
the divider would be here. So get your mind into that. It's, it's two of those atrium, atrii, double size. Um, a meeting this size probably couldn't take place in there, but a, a smaller Sunday forum probably will be taking place in there. Weekly, uh, space for chapel, space for yoga on a Wednesday night, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of use. And it has lots of windows to the courtyard and to the new green space that I mentioned first. You follow that around. Oops, oh, Scott, that's an old plan. <laughs> We've had a lot of plans, everybody. Right here, it says storage, if you can even read that, and coffee bar. That is one large meeting room. Staff will use that all the time. It's probably, square footage-wise, about the size of Emerson room, but, but functions a little better with a long table in it, roller chair type thing. And then, as I mentioned, the doorways into mural room, wider doorway into the corridor that goes into a wider entry into the kitchen, redefined, redeveloped kitchen. Um, Mary and Margaret Craddock have spent hours along with their team figuring out how the kitchen works. Three weeks ago, we had another um, snafu uh, that, that we're almost accomplished right now before we proceed. Snafu being about the, the coolers that go right here. You know those bank of refrigerators that are in the kitchen right now? Those are gone. We, got a walk, we will have a walk-in cooler. We'll have a walk-in refrigerator. So streamlined in the kitchen, cleaned up. Larger serving area. I don't know. On the plan, this says serving. It could say dessert room if that helps put you in, in location any better. <laughs> then back through dishwashing, which is on the other side of the kitchen. Door into dishwashing. Larger door into the gospel rooms. A little bit larger pass passageway down to the undercroft, the basement area, the um, outreach service area. All that brightened up, lightened up. Bethlehem Chapel um, made easier to, to work for all the purposes that Outreach uses it for right now. The windows that are in those, the Dorothy Sturm stained glass windows, those come out. Those get repurposed here on the back wall of the, of the multi-purpose room, three of them. And I think we've ended up with two of them here in the main hallway. So reusing what we've got, reusing more color throughout, making every space more multi-purpose and more serviceable. Then, let's go up the stairs real quick. And here we are on second floor. We end up at that little doorway, Romeo and Juliet balcony from the orgel room, that space. The ceiling's still low. The ceiling will remain low. We're not changing any of that. The Atrium classrooms right there remain the same. Large classroom here on the end. New restroom. Hello, new restroom. <laughs> Multi-purpose, multi-family uh, family restroom there. Nursery that I pointed out earlier with some glass right here on the front. Same windows out onto Second Street. So big light-filled nursery area. No longer the dank small space like it is right now. We've come up the stairs, we're in this corridor, we break through the wall. Right here. We walk into the Great Hall. I'm standing about right here right now. Guess what's missing? The fireplace. The fake fireplace moves across the room. <laughs> same fireplace, same stone, same woodwork, all right there, it'll be beautiful. Um, Wainscoting stays, the room gets a little smaller. It will have sprinklers. Yay, we have to pay for sprinklers for this room, safety first. Um, they'll work on the beams as it stands right now. The chandeliers get centered within the new room, new coat of paint. Um, somebody said no more of the rose color up on the ceiling. There'll be a different paint color as yet to be determined. Doors remain the same to the courtyard. Uh, what has the courtyard done for as long as all of us has, have been here? Leak. What will the courtyard not do when we're done with this project? Leak. Hopefully not leak, correct. So that's being worked on right now. New columbarian niches filling the rest of the courtyard space. We're walking back out of the corridor. 
We're going right across the hallway, so figure out like where the fireplace is right now. In there are double doors into the new, um, it's another meeting room, no longer called the library, probably still called the Montgomery foyer. It will be the pre-function room, bride changing, uh, pre-baptism, pre-funeral area. Right now, that Montgomery foyer, as you know, is five steps down, totally inaccessible to anybody who has any issues with mobility. Now it will be brought up to the same level as the Great Hall. Pretty room, um, a little softer furnishing than the rest of the space. We come back out of the Montgomery foyer, we go through this corridor into a new area and into the church. So all that flow, as you remember, from the church, through the new foyer area, to the restroom, along the classrooms, into the new choir suite, getting all of their changing rooms and offices connected off the main uh, Crook Auditorium, out of the choir room, Emerson redone a little bit, out of the 92 building, into the parish hall, there's the elevator, there are the current steps. Elevator will be re refurbished, um, new doors, new floor, less noise, smoother ride. How about that? Those are the high points of that. Um, to put a new elevator in, we, we've just learned with our new contractors, would mean digging a new pit, building a new shaft, costing upwards of a, of a three quarters of a million bucks. That's not happening, but <laughs> the elevator's gonna be better. You're all gonna love it. Everybody who uses it will love it. But remember, we've got nice new wide stairs and a light-filled room for, for most of us to use most of the time. Redone bathrooms. They do not open onto the hallway. <laughs> Smart, right? That was, a, that was a relatively easy one. A little entry area and the doors into the restrooms go this way, more space, new, new finishes. The coffee room, the crump parlor it is, as it is now is chair storage, same doors into the great hall. Back to the corridor, the library, aka the passage on this plan has a ramp in it. So the chute is in that room, not in a separate area. You go straight into this passage or the library wider doorway and the ramp into the church is right there with it. Also stairs right here, same door into the church. Flower room right here, cart can come and go through that door. It's closer to the church, easier to get the flowers in. I'm sorry, that's the Nino Shep flower room. And the, the nice big plaque that's there, Nina says we're gonna lose. Right, it's not gonna remain there. It'll be known as the Nino Shep flower room, but at any rate. Third floor gets minor changes. Um, those changes will come later. We are stubbing water up to that, so there will be a bathroom on that in the not so distant future. Fourth floor um, will be storage, uh, kind of mothballed in many ways. It's a, a logistical fire marshal issue that we're not using it for many more purposes at this point. So, more meeting rooms, better flow, all working. Yes. All ramp, all ramp the whole way. There are some uh, floor height differences. So a little, a little ramp right here where we're breaking from new building into the parish hall and a little ramp on the bride's walk where those stairs are right now. But the flow, so those are pews. Those are the newly um, widened pews, correct? Newly widened pews with nice new cushions. You come out that doorway into the new foyer, one straight line to the restroom and the nursery. Uh, what sort of changes are going to be made, if any, to the sacristy and the vestibule? Nothing. So the elevator, good, good question, thank you. The elevator, as planned, was going to make a stop on floor 2.5, which is the vesting area and the sacristy, if that makes sense to everybody. Uh, we're not getting a new elevator. 
we're not making this step onto 2.5. So as in planned, you know, nothing was changing really in the sacristy anyway, except making the air conditioner work a little bit better than it, than it has. And the vesting room will be reinvigorated a little bit, but that'll be done off plan. Acolyte vesting goes to the far south end of 2.5, if that makes sense. If any of you have ever been up the back stairs to Kristen's office, that becomes the acolyte vesting area with hallway that passes clergy and limb vesting. That may be more information than some of you want, but that's what's happening up there. It's not happening under this plan, but will happen under separate contract. Debbie? Um, very, very little at this iteration. Um, the, the, the lower level remains, the retaining wall remains. There'll be some sort of refinishing on that, but we're, uh, that probably comes with parking lot renovation, which is not under this phase right now or this scope. So that lower level stays, it'll have some sort of surfacing change, as yet unknown. And it'll connect to the green space, simply. Mm -hmm. Kim? Michelle, <laughs> I'm doing well on my names today, sorry. So, so yes, there is a coffee bar there. You're right by the mural room. This is, uh, sorry, just lost that one. Uh, this is, I, I imagine, for the most part, weekday coffee sort of bar usage. Um, second floor, there is a coffee bar right here that doesn't show on this plan outside the, the Crook Auditorium, the choir area, again, weekly. Uh, where does Sunday morning coffee happen? I don't know, it, it depends on how we use the space. This room perhaps remains. Also, the atrium is a space, and I think when we have green space outside and it's, and it's decent Memphis weather, it's out there, right? So, so flexibility on that. And, and the library is still there, just open? Bookshelves are in there, yes. Probably will be named, be, will be, continue to be called library. Um, some soft seating in there, probably some kind of library table um, no longer a card catalog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, maybe, I don't know, I, uh, library <laughs> folks may not be here, yeah. So anything else on that part of this? I'm here always, I'm, I'm close by on David Lusk email, but I've got plans this morning in case anybody wants to walk through those further with me and, and go more deeply into what I glossed over here. Happy to do it, Pat. All right, what are my other points? Okay, so then the other valuable and important things that I want to impart to all of us today, these are party line numbers, meaning put them in your minds and they're what we're standing with. 8.75 is the total amount that we're working with. So that's the total amount that the campaign raised and has earmarked for this project. $8,750,000. So congratulations, everybody, on that. There's a new $250,000 that we got this week from, from Day Foundation. Clarence Day was a member of Calvary for many years. The Jesus that waves at everybody with no hand coming out of the chute is from Clarence's collection. Uh, that, that foundation um, just announced that to us. So that, that's a great gift for everything. The, the church itself... What we spend on there, $500,000 in round numbers, done deal, as Scott says, on time and on budget, which means that we have another $700,000 $750, that encompasses phase two. I like knowing those numbers. As Scott said, Margaret McLean has done well at, at putting those in, a, in to us in a digestible manner. So those are easy for all of us to pat ourselves on the back with and say, here's what we're doing at Calvary. We're getting a lot out of it. And let's see, when do we start? 412 is the formal day that all the boxes are supposed to have been packed and moved or hidden on campus. Contractors get it the following Monday, so that is right after Easter. Uh, 
begins with, with demo. They'll be sledgehammering areas of the kitchen to see if we can glean any more of the 18 inches that is the separating wall between the 92 and the parish home building. They'll be looking at the shoot here in the library to see how that old wall actually works. These are all the things that aren't in plans in straight order and we've kind of guessed at um, in 100 year old spaces. And figuring out the, the Brides Walk passage here a little more clearly and then just knocking out walls, getting ready for it. So again, David at davidlustgallery.com or 901-283-3800. Call me, ask the questions, throw out your ideas. There is still lots of work to be figured out, lots of interior works um, that haven't even been um, figured at all, meaning paint color, furnishings, the rest of that. We have a little bit of money in our FFE to, to spend on that. It's going to be a new place, and I think this new one's going to last for another 70 years before a major renovation. So thanks, everybody, for getting us where we are right now, and thanks for the, um, your confidence and excitement as we move forward for the next year and a half together. Leanne? Is there a question? The alley will not be the alley. Uh, good question. We, Calvary, uh, received from the city that thing formerly known, currently known as the alley, presently known as the alley, that the flow will be changed one way or the other. The alley, the access points will go through the parking lot. And I believe some of that will happen in this iteration moving forward. Um, we don't have the money to do the whole thing. But let's see, how do I answer that, that better? Uh, yeah, it'll be repaved. How about that? We'll just we'll stick at that one. Not yet fully gleaned out or, or figured out. Um, thanks, and thanks for acknowledging. The reason you can just pull David's string and let him go on any aspect of this is because he spent 10,000 hours uh, working on this in the last few years. Um, let me have that clicker back, David. Um, so we're going to talk about life after Easter, when things, when we roll into what David has just described to us, um, life is going to change. But y'all are nimble and know all about pivots and all the things. So I'm going to give you an overview of how things are going to roll out. And then uh, Jocelyn and Jeremy are going to come talk a little bit more specifically about how children and youth will work. Uh, and also how fellowship, jo um, Jeremy's going to talk a little bit about how fellowship works. Generally, so high level, where are things going to happen, which matters. Uh, Sundays at Calvary, we're going to have church in the church. That stays online, right? We finished that project. Um, formation is going to happen in the, the Grizzlies Prep Middle School. It was initially the fifth grade building that Calvary beautifully renovated for the sake of their expansion. Now it's been eight years ago probably, something like that, that that building came online for Grizzlies Prep. They have been absolutely delightful. Every time I've emailed Tim Ware over the last year to say, hey, we may, could we use some of your spaces Wednesday evenings or Sundays for classes? The answer was yes. No hesitation. How can we make it happen for you? Um, they're really grateful, grateful tenants to have that space to do their good work at Grizzlies Prep. So we're, our goal is to not go over to the big Grizzlies Prep across the, um, across the parking lot. They, we can if we want to, if we want to have an event over there. But our, our goal is to keep our footprint as close in as we can for traffic on Sundays. I'll show you a picture. Um, and outreach is going to happen in Welcome In. Basically, Welcome In is two halves. It's a long building. The back half right now, if you've been at Room in the Inn, has a couple of sofas and people eat back there. The plan is to move the clothes closet flow to the back, generally, the things that happen that need, need some space to stay set up. And the front half, the north half, 
That'll be flexible to be able to uh, turned over to program different things. If it's a room in the end night, if we can do that. If it's a, it could be a fellowship space if we need that uh, space as well. So Christine and her folks are working hard to consolidate how, uh, how those ministries. She's going to talk more about that in a minute. Um, and then Wednesdays are going to happen at St. Mary's Cathedral. Let me just, before I do that. So here's, here's a, my fabulous rendering of our block. Um, Basically, you can, you can imagine the, here, I'm going to use this. You can imagine on a Sunday, church, the, the front of the church will be accessible. So part of it, the, the contractor knows that we either have to rem- have access through um, the elevator or our architects. It was a lot more complicated than you'd think to make a ramp go to the front door once all the grades start falling away from the door. But they did design one. So the plan is for there to be a, a, a ramp that takes up half of the door and some of this space, all, always be accessible into the church. They also know that humans have to use the restroom at a regular, ba- regular period, you know. So restrooms are going to, is a priority to keep those online every moment we can or to have an alternative to be determined. Just saying we've heard your cries and it is at top of, top of mind for them. So um, you can imagine then how flow would be. It's a little bit longer here, but this is where that Tommy Pacella ship is going to give us a patch of green, um, which I think during this interim is really going to help our life together, especially if we're bringing children over to classrooms, outreach here. Um, it ties it together in a beautiful way. You're not going to be walking your kids to the nursery past a construction zone, right? Past bar, you know, fencing and whatnot. Um, so parking would still be over here. Life would kind of flow this direction. Um, we've gone back and forth. I think we're landing on having coffee over at Grizzly's Prep. So it's a little bit of a hike, but to kind of, that's where, where adult classes, children's classes, youth classes are going to happen. Um, we're going to create that space together. As we've learned, we've done this pretty well as a community because when something doesn't work exactly like we hoped it would, even though we have a plan, um, we've made another plan. So we've got spaces that we've left some flexibility around the rooms that we can, uh, we can adapt as, uh, as we go. Does that flow? But let me leave that up for a second. Does that flow make sense as far as just the physical buildings we're going to use for our different things? Um, there are four nice-sized classrooms over here which allow us to have nursery, children, youth, and um, adult uh, classes as well. And they're going to talk more about that in a minute. Um, the second thing I said is that Wednesday nights, we're going to go to St. Mary's Cathedral. They've been also gracious, um, letting us come over and, and uh, invade their space on Wednesdays. Uh, choir has space. Kids have space. We're going to use their kitchen and um, uh, have our fellowship on Wednesday nights and invite them into it. They're pretty small right now, and uh, Gary Mead's excited to have the energy in the building. Hopefully, it's an encouragement to our friends at St. Mary's Cathedral as they're rebuilding uh, what they do. All right, I'm going to go ahead to, so one more time, Sundays work that way, Wednesdays work that way. Lastly, I'm going to say this again, but we're going to have an open house on the 7th of April, so during our regular times, we're going to have coffee and whatnot so that you can go into the physical spaces and see where classes are going to be at Grizzlies Prep. There'll be lots of signs to tell you exactly where to go, um, both before and after the 1030 service. So then you'll see, get the lay of the land, figure out how things are going to flow. Well, let me go just do this. It is a good picture. I mean, hold that, hold that position there, Jeremy. Huh. It's frozen. What, Jeremy and Jocelyn, come on up here, because we've got to get you all. My apologies. What is going on here? Don't you love these beasts? You may not have pictures. Oh, okay. Anyway, all right. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Good morning. It's 
it's been a little while since I uh, spoke in front of a group of people who were not this tall, so <laughs> bear with me. Um, Jeremy and I do a lot of our work together. Uh, first, I'm just going to tell you about what's going to be happening in children's uh, and family ministry, and then Jeremy will talk about some things as well. Um, I wanted to thank Scott for giving us the opportunity to talk to you. Um, and I'd like to inform everyone just what's going to be coming up as we enter the second phase of our uh, renovations. Uh, I'd like to assure you, first of all, uh, we're planning on providing consistency, um, but also some new uh, opportunities to hopefully keep our momentum up and everybody coming and interested. Uh, on Sundays uh, after Easter, our nursery will relocate to Grizzlies Prep. Uh, it'll be in room three. And we will continue to operate on Sunday mornings from 7.45 until noon. Children's formation will do the same. Uh, we'll be in room four. And we're actually going to be teaming up uh, with the youth and having sort of an open schoolhouse type setting where all our ages will be together. Um, our Narnia series, which is going strong, uh, will continue through the spring. And then in May, we will complete a short unit that we've devised called Ways to Pray, where we will explore different ways of prayer with the children for those three uh, Sundays in May. Um, following uh, that, in June, we will have a summer of service where uh, the youth and children will combine. And we'll do six service projects spread over the 12 Sundays of summer. Um, and we're going to repeat each project two Sundays in a row because we have found that people are traveling, kids are dropping in, and we just want to make sure everybody has the opportunity to participate in these um, projects. Uh, we will continue to offer Children's Chapel for as many Sundays as possible. Um, when we find that we can't safely offer Children's Chapel, in a construction zone. Um, we will communicate that with the participating families directly and we will also make sure it's published in the uh, various communications, um, the epistle, the children's newsletter, all of those things. Um, please remember that children are always welcome at all of Calvary's services and that our nursery can serve them until their sixth birthday. Uh, so during the time that we cannot offer that 20-minute break uh, for children, uh, the 1030 service, there are other options for them as well. Uh, on Wednesdays, uh, after Easter, our nursery team will move and be on site at St. Mary's Cathedral. Um, and we, they will be in a room adjacent to the dining area. So your children will be right nearby while you're enjoying your uh, dinner and time of fellowship. Um, and they will be there from 5.15 to 7.15, and we'll have extended hours for the um, children of choir members. Uh, other children's options at the cathedral will begin at 6.15, and they will include children's choir rehearsals and gathering fellowship. And also, um, we will meet up with the youth uh, for Compline, which will end at 7.15. Um, Please know, uh, y'all, that our safe church guidelines are going to remain in place uh, no matter what uh, we are, we are um, endeavoring to do. And we appreciate parents' attention to these sign-in, sign-out procedures, especially as we are moving into new spaces and making those transitions. Those procedures are super important. So thank you. Um, one thing that we are looking forward to is inviting and welcoming the cathedral children and their families to our activities on Wednesday evening. Um, we just really think it'll be a wonderful opportunity to come together in that way. Um, I had talked about a few new things that we were going to be doing in order to keep momentum up and morale going. Um, and so I wanted to let you know that this summer, uh, and this is in the planning stages, so I can't give specific details yet, but um, I will be co-hosting Vacation Bible School again uh, on Wednesdays in June, uh, and the planning meetings for that will start in April. Um, I can tell you that last year I just partnered with Grace St. Luke's, but this summer we're partnering with um, four churches all together within our diocese, and so it's going to be a big, super um, exciting time for the children to come together. Uh, also, uh, a new... Th um, Offering is going to be parents' coffee and play dates, which will take place on Saturdays, uh, two Saturdays a month during the summer at different playgrounds around the city. We will change the location each time. Um, and that will not be a drop-off uh, for children, but a time for parents <laughs> and children to come and have 
Uh, please don't just drop them off, <laughs> wave goodbye, you need to stay with them. No, it's going to be a time of, um, for parents to come together and also children uh, to continue some fellowship during the summer when things do honestly do slow down, you know, um, at, at the church. So um, thank you so much for your flexibility during this time and just um, know that the time of transition is something we're going to pay close attention to uh, maintaining consistency and reliabil reliability for everyone. Um, so thank you. Does anyone have any questions uh, so far about all of this info we're throwing at you? Okay, great. I'm going to let Jeremy uh, continue. Let's go. Okay. All righty. Good morning. It's good to be with y'all. So, as you've heard, things are changing in good ways. Uh, Wednesdays, we're going to be meeting over at St. Mary's, and we're going to continue to have dinner at 515 together at a table like we normally do here on Wednesdays. And then we will head to the youth room, a very comfy, cozy space over in St. Mary's um, that we're going to bring our own stuff and still make it like home, like here, and uh, at St. Mary's. And then we will uh, have Compline over at St. Mary's until 7.15, like Jocelyn said. Um, Sunday EYC will continue in April and May uh, in the Welcome Inn, right? I don't, directionally challenged, right over there. Um, so Sunday EYC will continue at the Welcome Inn. Um, for Sunday formation, we will combine, as Jocelyn said, uh, with children's formation and continue the Narnia series um, in the Grizzlies prep uh, room four uh, during the formation hour. Then, over the summer, again, we're going to stay combined and do the summer of service, which I'm super excited about. And then the EYC over the summer will combine with Grace St. Luke's and we're going to be doing a summer of service as well where we're going to be going to different service organizations on different days um, to do service projects and learn about different nonprofits here in Memphis. Um, that is still in the planning phase, so more details will come soon. Um, and then also in the summer, you might be wondering, what, what fellowship's going on? I got you. I, I can tell you that right now. Uh, so we will have some fellowship events this summer, um, and more information will be coming soon. That's also still in the planning phase, but we will be having a game night, a movie night, and a trivia night. So get your trivia teams ready, get your board games that you want to play ready, and we'll find a nice movie for y'all to watch. Um, and those dates will be... June 12th, July 17th, and August 21st. Um, thank y'all so much for all your flexibility, and I'm excited. It'll be great. Thanks, you too. Uh, Christine, come talk about community ministries. I talked too long, so we're rolling up on a round. Remember, you're going to hear from everybody. You can always find us and ask more questions. Good morning, everybody. Boy, uh, Calvary is so great. I love to see y'all's faces. Um, we are very excited about moving to the Welcome Inn. We're going to move on April 1st and April 2nd. So we will take the entire contents of our clothes closet, toiletry room, where the ponchos are, where the sleeping bags are, where the bomba socks are. We will take everything out of this building and move it across the parking lot to the Welcome Inn. Now, because the Welcome Inn has no stove, we have found Paper Plate Pavilion. Paper Plate Pavilion, you may know the architect, Mr. Self, his son, David Self, runs paper, oh, are you flashing? Oh, do you have a picture of the food truck? I don't, I missed it. Huh? That's on me. We have a beautiful picture of Scott Richard, and please imagine a beautiful picture of Scott Richard and Mary O'Brien in a blue food truck, which um, is really, hold that up, Scott. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, so 
we will serve. We have contracted with David. He will prepare 200 hot sandwiches of some sort, and they will be ready. We're going to serve downstairs here April 1st. April 7th, we're going to move to the food truck. We are going to go through the food, cl through the clothing closet, through the toiletries. We're going to have foot care in the middle. Y'all know that this morning, for the first time, we had Planned Parenthood. They did HIV testing. Amazing gift to Calvary. And um, we'll have uh, health screen. Barney Elam, who was back there one second ago, does uh, health screenings. We'll still have foot care with um, uh, University of Tennessee medical students. We'll still have HIV testing. We'll still have um, shots when the health department or, or shot RX will give them to us. So all these are when Patty and Jerry bring them. But we'll still have all the things we expect to have all the things that we have had. Um, here on this wall, I have something that you can barely see, but it is, um, um, why do we do outreach here? To make God's love visible in downtown Memphis, we'll still be doing that. Here, that no, you're totally great. Here, the, this is underlined in yellow because this is where there's room for you to come. We will be receiving your donations that you always give us. Thank you so much. Your coats, your hats, your belts, these um, golf hats, all those things, or whatever they are, baseball hats. They will still be looking forward to getting all those, but instead of dropping them off here, we hope you'll drop them off in front of the welcome in. We'll have those blue carts. You can pull right up. We'll come out. Um, we expect that Mary, Honey, and Connie will be there at the welcome in greeting everyone because this building won't exist. So that's where you will come to say good morning to Connie and Mary, Honey, when you come during the week. We also expect to still hand out from 11 a.m. until 1, 1 p.m., we expect to hand out food to those who come knocking on the door saying, I'm hungry. So your gifts enable that to happen. Your time, your energy, there's a blank line there for you to come. If you are available on Monday, April 1st, or Tuesday, April 2nd, from 10 a.m. until 2 a.m., we will be, uh, no, sorry, thank you. 10 a.m. until 2 p.m., we will provide lunch for anyone who helps us move, so that moving is going to be incredible. It will move within the building because we were given a wonderful gift and we have wheels on the bottom of all the moving um, shelves and racks and everything. So when um, we have EYC, we'll just move everything to the side to accommodate for hide and seek or whatever they do. Um, <laughs> so this is, um, uh, we will still host Welcome In during the summer season, which will take the month of April off and start back in May. If you have not signed up on the Sign Up Genius for the Welcome In, you can still do it through the 31st of this month. There are just a few empty places there. Um, is this my only slide? Oh, sorry, well, what, do you, what, what else do you got? No, that's okay. Well, I had another one. No, that's okay, I sent you. <laughs> yes, we only have a few background slides. Um, I, listen, we got one more thing to do. Margaret Craddock's going to talk about the Monument Lab out back. Thank you, Christine. Y'all do too much stuff. We can't get in a... Okay, if y'all can hang on a few more minutes, I'm going to try to whiz through Monument Lab. Okay, y'all know about our wonderful slave 
memorial to enslaved people that we are, are going to be able to do through, partly through funding from Monument Lab, $100,000 to be spent by December, um, and that will fund the process of figuring out, you know, what, it, what is our mission, how are we going to request proposals, what kind of designer are we going to have, some of the things we don't know yet. But we have been very fortunate to secure the excellent facilitation services of Juanita Ortiz, who is getting us in line. We've had two meetings with her, and that's been wonderful. So to go over the space we have, if you can see this little white line down at the bottom that says 50 feet, that's our current alley. The chancel with the altar choir area was added in 1882. I believe I correctly deciphered that from the great book, which I will say I'm very sorry Vincent Astor did not have the opportunity to rewrite that book before he passed away. It, it, it's kind of hard to work with. There's great information there, but you got to search. Um, so that uh, the original slave market, wonderful Tim Hubner discovered, was not where we thought it was. It was right behind, right under part of the chancel and the current alley. It was 64 feet by 149 feet, so we think about 15 feet of that is actually under the altar area. So there we have the juxtaposition of the sacred and the profane. Um, it's, it's interesting that there is only one other site in the whole wide world that we have discovered that has a slave market and, a com and communities of faith right together. And that is the market from which slaves were deported from Tanzania. There is now, it was the last operating slave market in the world. There is now the Anglican Cathedral on one side of that and a mosque on the other side. And then we will have Calvary Episcopal Church in Memphis, Tennessee, which will have, you know, there are plenty of memorials to slave markets, but not at a church in the United States. So this $100,000 from Monument Lab is unrestricted funding to get us to the process of figuring out how we're gonna design this thing. So, okay, here is our great team. Ernestine Jenkins, history professor at the University of Memphis. Tim Scott, Rich Watkins from the um, Lynching Sites Memorial, me. Uh, Annie Parker on one end, Margaret Grace Haltom on the other, grew up at Calvary. They're both our scholar planners. Margaret Grace is the one who wrote the grant to Monument Lab that has allowed us to take this thing forward. Dorothy Sanders Wells, been a great participant, but she's just been elected the Episcopal Bishop of Mississippi. She will probably not have as much time for this as she has had. <laughs> David is our artistic advisor. Christina Ross from the Vestry will be joining us. And one thing I will say is that going through this process has allowed this team and hopefully the rest of Calvary to connect with other groups. The group from Klondike, which also received a grant, was here last week. Then yesterday some of us went to something that Ernestine and Tim had been involved in the reopening of Zion Cemetery, which is an incredible site, 15 acres, estimated 30,000 African-American graves. And they have a monument that was dedicated to the cemetery and a, mass, and a, a massacre that happened connected with some of the, those people. Next one. Okay, the red is where the the part of the memorial will be, we could also end up using some of the, the little parking lot that, that David just said is now going to be grass and possibly some of the Calvary Park on the alley. We don't know, we won't know until we find the pe person or people who are gonna design this wonderful thing. You can see 
in the, the slide on the, on the right where the, the chancel is and where the alley goes through. There's one more? Uh, yes. yes, okay. This actually, these are the groups that were funded last year. And I will say, it's kind of hard to read. I can give you more information. But as you travel through the United States, you might just want to take a little detour and stop at some of these. This summer, Bill doesn't know this yet, but <laughs> um, I have made plans for us to go to Courage in the Hollers in West Virginia. It, it memorializes um, a mine war. And this one in the Four Corners area, walking with the NATO, which has to do with Native American spirituality. So we're going to be driving around. There, there are 10 more that were funded this year, and those are going to be some great connections to make. They're all over the country, from the very tip of Florida all the way up crosswise to Washington State. Um, and these are all to really acknowledge the commemorative landscapes that exist in the United States that have been suppressed and that people just need to know about. We're really excited to have this opportunity. This is going to be a great thing for Calvary and the city. And post-Easter, we will continue to meet on Zoom. We've been doing combination in-person Zoom, so we'll have to find another in-person site, but we can always do Zoom. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, all. Um, a lot going on here. I know Christine deserved 14 more slides. She absolutely did. Um, but we wanted to run through all of these aspects of life together and let you know at least now you kind of know who to reach out to if you need more as we travel together through this. Why are we going to be able to do this? Why do we believe we'll be able to do this? Because of this. You all remember the joy that was actually present in this room when Calvary had to get displaced from our church and come over here and say our prayers. So God bless you all. Thank you for all the people who have uh, made this happen. That's just one more advertisement for that Sunday where you can come, walk around, see where life on Sundays are, is going to happen here at, uh, at Calvary. Thanks to all these folks. Thanks to all of you. Yeah, one Staff remains on the fourth floor, so the fourth floor stays out of scope, and we get to stay up there. That's really helped us a lot. Third floor is going to stay put for a while until the end of the project when we get it refurbished in some simple ways for, uh, for our youth. Thanks, all. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.